from Clarkston, Michigan, the greatest city in the world. It's the Jose Aliaga Show. Jose Aliaga knows everyone. Get to know him as he interviews some of the most fascinating people from the greater Independence Township area. And now, broadcasting from the studios at Clarkston High School, the home of the state champion wolves, here's Jose Aliaga. Welcome to the Jose Aliaga Show. Today, we have a special guest. I have two guests, and they are Democrats. You know, for many weeks, months, we have several Republicans, candidates, conservative guests. But I want to bring more variety. I want to bring new guests and have different opinion. I like the freedom of speech. And today, I have Jordan Tiffany. He's, uh, Jordan Tiffany is a college uh, Democrat from University of Michigan. And also, I have Matt Drower. He's considered socialist. And he, they, want, they come today to, uh, to share their ideas about the Democrat primary, which is also, you know, they have also process, the same like the Republican primary that we have been talking at this show. We also have the Democrat process that is going to pick the nominee for the presidents of the United States. That, you know, Republicans and Democrats, we have both nominees for November election. So how are you doing, guys? Pretty good. Doing well. Doing well. Thank you for coming here. I'm very happy to have both of you. You guys look like a rock stars. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes, absolutely. So, Jordan, I'm going to start with you. Who, I mean, we have two candidates for the Democrats, are Secretary Hillary Clinton and Senator Bernie Sanders. Who do you like? I like uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. Why? I think he's the, the true progressive uh, that's running. Uh, he stands for a lot of issues that I want. Mm -hmm. uh, and make college more affordable uh, for like, across the board for everyone uh, by providing uh, college education for four years uh, mm -hmm. for free uh, with simple tax uh, uh, on uh, Wall Street and then uh, universal health care uh, mm -hmm. through single payer. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the direction that the country needs to go in. So. And Mac, tell yes. me, who do you like in this Democrat primary? Definitely Bernie Sanders as well. Okay, yes. why? Well, I mean, I'm an EMT. Mm -hmm. My father worked at Buick online for 30 years. I mean, he is consistently been for labor, in support of labor, and in support of the middle class. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, he just resonates so much because he is a social democrat, mm -hmm. which means federal expenditure funding for fire departments, public schools, things that America really did well. And mm -hmm. so, and I, and I think bipartisan, once you cut through, you know, the green tape, I mean, the red tape, I think that those are bi bipartisan issues, and I think both could get in support of that. And mm -hmm. I think that's what you're getting right now, you know, two non-traditional candidates, both Trump and Sanders, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I, I'm, I'm obviously in the Sanders camp. So. Okay, but Jordan, you mentioned free college, which sounds good, but do we have the funding for fund free college? Yeah, it would be done through uh, the taxes on Wall Street. So mm -hmm. the, he has three different uh, really small taxes. Uh, one's like half of a percent, uh, I think one percent, and uh, even less than that for a, a third one. So uh, based on like speculation, uh, they'll get a tax on that. So and you think that, we need to that raise will pay taxes? It's only on uh, Strategically Wall Street, rate. Strategic rate mm -hmm. so uh, it, it won't happen to middle class or even uh, like normal rich people, or just mm -hmm. uh, people on Wall Street that are doing speculation. And do you guys think that will slow the economy maybe? Because, you know, when you take economic class, they say Quite conversely, raise taxes. Mm -hmm and make things uh, more expensive. I, I think it would make it more stable. I did, then yeah, they I wouldn't be doing... So it's, the, it's, it's on Wall, Wall Street speculation. So they, it's <coughs> these wild speculations and it's a you know, big risk with, mm -hmm. comes big reward, right? Mm -hmm. well, with big risk also comes economic downturn, 2008 housing bubble. You know? okay. And so it's like so. a tax would make them more conservative 
in mm -hmm. their speculation. Mm -hmm. And so I think, therefore, it will have a stabilizing effect on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so some people believe mm -hmm. when you raise taxes, I mean, that scares some right. investors, some people that right. rest in investing more but these aren't investing i mean these are speculators you know okay. this is a specific strategic tax okay. it's not tax across the board raising uh -huh. yeah. you know okay. this is a strategic tax that is going to i mean it's largely it's been untaxed so mm -hmm. i mean these people are just speculating 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 which is causing market instability mm -hmm. you know this is providing longevity to the market in mm -hmm. mind yeah. and then it has the the benefit of uh, growing the economy by having uh, college graduates uh, not be bogged down mm -hmm. by their debt. They're actually able to stimulate the economy mm -hmm. uh, after they graduate. Uh, they can get jobs and actually purchase stuff, mm -hmm. which helps the economy. And then also there's the, uh, the whole idea that mm -hmm. the people on Wall Street aren't, you know, just going to destroy the market mm -hmm. uh, when they're trying to get you know, more money for themselves. So uh, other investments become, you know, more stabilized and we don't have to worry about the economy I know suffering for young because people, of that. I know for young people, we, a lot of us, it's a gamble, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends, we, we go right into the, the labor force or you go into school. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a, a funny narrative. We'll go in, we'll go in, go to start going to school mm -hmm. and then we realize like it's costing us so much and so then we'll enter the labor force mm -hmm. and we'll say, you know, I'm just going to go make some money. And then after a while, you realize, like, I'm really not making that money, much money. I want to be something more. So then you go back into school and you're, this whole time you're accruing debt, mm -hmm. which has interest. And, and so it's really, you have more people not going to school, not because they don't want to go to school. It's because it, the juice isn't worth the squeeze these days. You don't know if you're going to get a job. You could have a master's degree and you don't know if you're going to get a job and you got forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in debt. You know, mm -hmm. so if we were to do something to mitigate that, you're going to end up with a much more educated population and, and you're not going to stifle those kids mm -hmm. going out and getting an education. And I think, and this is a, a, another bipartisan thing, mm -hmm. I think both, both parties represent, or, you know, receive the idea that, that well-educated and informed people is a good thing, you know, for our, for our citizen base, for our right. economic, you know, competition right. globally. I, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. the, the, I think that question of the some of the arguments can how to reach the point mm -hmm. is that some of the arguments that yeah yeah and like when we do have a federal deficit and i'm you know i'm mm -hmm. no stranger to that i understand like we mm -hmm. don't want to spend more money mm -hmm. but at the same time the last 14 years we've had two you know mm -hmm. large scale mm -hmm. you know, military conflicts going on in iraq and afghanistan and mm -hmm. regardless we have we've, yeah trillions and trillions of dollars we put to mm -hmm. that and it's like well you know it kind of it served to do nothing but destabilize the region and and we really didn't receive much of it you know and and that's you know, it's just true. I, it's a lot yeah. of things that uh, that's why I mean that both candidates are leading mm -hmm. in the well, at least in the Republican is uh, the anti establishment candidates right now, yeah. and that's part of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just curious, I just wonder why you guys know, don't want to support Hillary Clinton. She got experience, she was a mm -hmm. first lady of Arkansas, first lady of the United States, mm -hmm. she was a senator. I mean, first lady is yeah. now like. Elect position, I guess, right. but, but it's an experience-based position. Yeah, she see yeah. who is there. She see the players mm -hmm. in Washington. She deals sometimes. She, well, she deals with the state level. She had the, the, sure. the experience at state level, mm -hmm. federal level, Secretary of state, state yeah. senator. Mm -hmm. She was in good committees. I, I think Robert Rice, Secretary of Labor under the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. I think he really said said it the best. He said, Clinton, in my opinion, is the best candidate to run the system as it is now. Right to mm -hmm. run the status quo. Mm -hmm. She's a reformist. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders is a revolutionary. He mm -hmm. wants to change the system. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to me, that sounds much more because obviously the status quo is increasing income inequality. Income mm -hmm. inequality is increasing illicit commerce. That's mm -hmm. increasing violence. We see that we had front row seats to the Flint, you know, mm -hmm. just mess, you know, like I can't really describe it in any other way than the Flint mess, you know, mm -hmm. and that's fiscal conservatism that ends up being a much more expensive deal in the end. So Jordan, do you believe raising taxes will actually help to help people to to reach better income? Well, Make raising them income on quality? certain individuals, mm -hmm. obviously you don't do it across the board raising income. Mm -hmm. uh, so you need to do it on like the wealthy who mm -hmm. usually aren't paying their taxes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they need a higher tax uh, uh, for themselves. Mm -hmm. And then on Wall Street, because they're not really taxed at all, mm -hmm. they get to put their money overseas in offshore bank accounts and none of the money is stimulating our economy. Mm -hmm. It's not helping anyone and mm -hmm. that's why we got like 
They make their money S here, mm -hmm. yeah, and off they, of the American institutions mm -hmm. that protect, and then mm -hmm. and then they, and then they, they ship them off, or they put yeah. that money in banks or So now we got 63 people mm -hmm. that have the same amount of money as the bottom half of the world's population, and mm -hmm. 63 mm -hmm. people don't need that much money. I see, so. and. You just talk about another subject. You just said before minutes ago that we spend a trillion dollars in in uh, Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan. So, you know, we're dealing with terrorists. We have always every day, so every sure. month we have to worry about these people, mm -hmm. radicals, they want to attack here. And what would your solution? You says they, let's put the expenditure, or let's take away what we're spending in this and mm -hmm. spending something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. but how we prevent this? Maybe? There is there's a big difference between all-out military conflict mm -hmm. and supporting NGOs on the ground and specific utilizing resources militarily. Specific. I mean, look at look at what uh, Obama is doing with the. I'm not a huge fan of drone attacks, but obviously it's mm -hmm. saving those boots on the ground. and It's actually cheaper in all reality mm -hmm. um, from the sources I've read. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's much cheaper a conflict like that. Um, but I think we just have to, you know, really like large scale military conflicts mm -hmm. are a, a, it's from the past, you know, that's a mm -hmm. that's 27, 20, 20th century uh, warfare and I think we just live in a, in a different time period now. And so obviously I'm not blind to the fact that is, there are threats out there to human security. But I think we can solve these based on economy and economic development packages, mm -hmm. not neoliberalism. I mean, not IMF, you know, World Bank. We need to invest in human capital and give people options mm -hmm. because I, I think people are generally risk averse and I think they will choose things, you know, to, to better themselves economically mm -hmm. via, via development packages than to just engage in, in, in you know, ideology or, or radicalism. So. Right. Well, no matter what, we mm -hmm. want a healthy economy, we want more sure. jobs, mm -hmm. but pay people, you know. I, I, I see some people, I met people that living paycheck by pay, paycheck, and we mm -hmm. want a, a change, a positive change that bring, you know, better jobs, mm -hmm. where people can select that one this job because pay more, and I like working in this instead, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people are choosing a job that they don't want, but they have to. They have to. They, and you when know. you throw kids in the mix or a marriage, I mean, you now are not thinking just for yourself. You are thinking for kids. I know I have a, I have a sister and she has kids and, you know, she wants to continue mm -hmm. her education, but it's expensive. She has two kids. Who's going to watch those kids? She doesn't have money for daycare. You know, she works a regular job. I mean, these are all things that, you know, rich people don't necessarily think about, you know, and, and you have to rely on family. And if you don't have family, you know, my mom, she lives in Arizona. My, mm -hmm. my father's retired, but, you know, he's old. He can't watch the kids all the time. And mm -hmm. so my sister, it, she, it's taken her, you know, five, ten you know, years almost to, to get through college. She's still not done. And, and you know, mm -hmm. that's just something that I think in a nation that retains a third of the world's wealth, you know, but represents 6% of the population, it's problems that we shouldn't be having, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is why you'll get both Trump and, you know, Bernie Sanders supporters, non-traditional candidates, because we want something to change. We want more options. We want reduced income inequality. Mm -hmm. We want a redistribution of wealth. But Bernie is not winning the election. I mean, he just won New Hampshire. And then what I see is, for what I see is the, mm -hmm. po the people are voting for Bernie, he's winning the popular vote, mm -hmm. popular delegates, or the delegates. Mm -hmm. but Hillary is winning the super delegates, and the super delegates are not too many people, it's a small group of people, yeah. but apparently they, they can make you win the election if you are a Democrat. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think that we should get rid of super delegates. What, what are the super delegates? What, what are those guys? They're high ranking Democrats that okay. get a vote that they get to decide who they want to vote for, mm -hmm. whereas the other delegates are delegated based on how uh, much popular vote a mm -hmm. candidate gets in that mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. uh, th either through the primary or through the caucus. So uh, with the delegates, uh, like Hillary's got like 400 some, mm -hmm. and you need just over 2,000 uh, delegates, mm -hmm. so that puts her you know, way up there with uh, having those 400. Bernie's got, I think, 20 now. He just got a new one uh, yesterday. Uh, so, obviously, that hinders him a bit, but, uh, like, he was already projected to lose Iowa, Nevada, and South Carolina, mm -hmm. and he didn't lose them as badly as people thought he was going to lose them, mm -hmm. which I think is a good sign. But uh, going into Super Tuesday, there's a lot of states that he's favored for, so uh, I think we'll see. That he'll he won New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Okay. But he lost Iowa because the superdelegates. 
correct? No. No, no. Quint anyway, Quintas. actually, he lost by four votes, I think, right? He, he, he lost, lost by, by coin, coin toss. <laughs> yeah, he, he lost by coin tosses. Uh, there okay. there were six coin tosses that decided how uh, certain counties were, uh, well, precincts were going okay. uh, for, uh, th they wound up going to Hillary. So he lost mm -hmm. by like less than 1% mm -hmm. uh, in Iowa. Uh, so it was really close there. And uh, Nevada was pretty close, South Carolina not so much, but he was still projected to lose mm -hmm. by even more than what he actually did. So, yeah, so I think it's a good sign. It's, it's undemocratic, you know, in my opinion. It is uh -huh. the, obviously, superdelegates, why do you think they're superdelegates? They have more power influence, aka financial wealth. And that, you know, I think that is a problem. I think it's un undemocratic. And I think when you look at the popular vote, we the people, we have spoken, like, so especially you're millennials. So the, the Democrat process or the primary process is not really a good process because it's not very democratic? It's I think things should change. Change should change. Yeah. Because apparently, like if someone wanna run as a Democrat ticket, you're gonna make sure you got the super delegates. You don't care about who's gonna go and vote in the primary that day. You just yeah. call the mm. those I, guys I, that I, you I, says they are yeah. more I, I special. Think the, the primary which itself is no isn't yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the super delegate aspect to it. We can okay. get rid of the super delegates mm -hmm. and okay. keep the primary structure and yeah. that would be fine. Because mm -hmm. uh, then the the popular vote would win. Mm -hmm. uh, but with super delegates, they can supersede it. It uh, undermines grassroots movements, mm -hmm. uh, which is already being done through, you know, just neglecting mm -hmm. Bernie in the media. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're not focusing on him at all. Uh, so, so if we're going in this way, mm -hmm. it looks like Hillary Clinton is going to win. I hope not. Okay, but <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see, Matt. Yes. If Hillary wins, mm -hmm. would you vote for Hillary on yes. November election? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Or maybe yeah. you maybe compared to anyone in the GOP right now, yes, I would vote for. Okay. I would vote for Hillary. The same question for you. Yeah, I still would, but I don't know if she would actually win. Really? Yeah. So you think Hillary Clinton can lose against any Republican? I I not anyone, but I, I've seen <laughs> polls where she loses to all but Trump, and Trump so, is only by one. point. Uh, one percent that so she wins by. She can beat Trump. She might Hopefully. be able to beat Trump. Mm -hmm. But Ted Cruz, no. Yeah, Ted Cruz, she loses too. Mm -hmm. Marco Rubio? She loses too. Kasich? She loses to him by the Ben most. Carson? 11 points. Uh, Rick Santorum? Uh, Rick Santorum's out. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone just said, okay, well, good Why answer. Why not Rick Santorum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she'll, she'll beat him just because he dropped out. She's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the uh, the same polls show that uh, Bernie beats every single one of these guys. Mm -hmm. So really, Bernie will. Be, but but you see, but this is what we talk. Even we talk a few minutes before sure. we start the, 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 this uh, the interview. You see, I'm very. I don't believe much about the polls for many reasons. Like if you mm -hmm. make a poll in hidden Independence Township, Clarkston area, mm -hmm. any Republican candidate wins, and mm -hmm. some people yeah. can call it Michigan polls. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if you make the polls in Detroit or Flint. Any Democrat win yeah. against a Republican, mm -hmm. so it depends where. Certainly, it's do, it's, it's, it's much like it's like Wall Street speculation. I mean, in all reality, it's it's right. speculative, right? And right. it's been it. Uh, there's obviously a lot of barriers, a lot of you know influence biases, depending because on where the poll originates, right? The, the polls thing I really mm -hmm. would like to see is the polls in the, as a state, just four states: mm -hmm. Ohio, Florida, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. The swing states or purple mm -hmm. purple sure. states, you know. Yeah. And when you you uh, actually look those polls. I think you have an idea, but I mean, I'm not talking about just uh, certain areas like a conservative mm -hmm. precincts and liberal precincts. We want actually that overall polling, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you have an idea. And remember, in primaries, we got 5 to 10% of the people, registered voters, mm -hmm. then vote. But on November election, we can get between 35 to 40, 40 something percent that. Mm -hmm. vote because not everybody votes either. Yeah. Right, and so that's people. the most important thing. And this is a bipartisan issue too, is, right. is that people need to get out there. Some of the most vocal, vocal people don't vote in the, the, the primary, don't vote in the general, you know. We mm -hmm. especially need to get out and vote in, in well, I mean, both of those, primary as well in, in general, as mm -hmm. local politics too, so. The last election in 2012, it seems like Barack Obama won by a lot, but mm -hmm. if you look the numbers in Ohio, he won by 1%. Florida, 1%. It was really close. Mm -hmm. And President Obama, I mean, he was campaigning for a long time because he knows he's a nominee. Romney have to wait to win the primary and then after, mm -hmm. you know, won the primary, starting campaigning. In Ohio, it's a good example because he just got 50 bases and Barack Obama have 200 bases. And he won by 1%. 
Now in this one, we don't have Encomba. You know, no, I mean, it's I mean, it's a uh, open seat. Mm. I mean, it's, it's gonna, I mean, I, I will go for see those the purple states instead. Looking, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a good strategy. You know, see mm -hmm. what states are, are malleable to you know one mm -hmm. one one party or the other. You know? Yeah, it's difficult to see. Yeah. This is the poll and says that this guy yeah. is gonna win. But where is the poll? If you do the polling, mm -hmm. like I said, so here in Detroit, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because the four purple states are the one yeah. who decide. Yeah. I can be wrong, but mm -hmm. it has been happening for every election. Sure. You know. So okay, so what are you saying, Bernie Sanders? Period. But you will yeah. vote for, for Hillary if, if if she gets the nomination. Mm -hmm. I'd vote for her just because she's better than any of the Republicans well, running. You know, I think a lot of people vote based on uh, this abstract principle-based idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at what candidate is gonna is gonna do the best. I mean, who's who's fighting for you? Most of these candidates, mm -hmm. we can't relate with economically, mm -hmm. socially. I mean, there's so many. I mean, Bernie Sanders is the lowest mm -hmm. paid, you know, out of all of them. Mm -hmm. He has the, the least amount of money by far of any mm -hmm. candidate there. He's the only one that has somewhat, you know, can see into the, to the eyes of the laborer, you know, mm -hmm. the, the individual, you know, guy, right? So the regular Joe. But most people, even if they're very compassionate people, buy into these large-scale uh, abstract political ideas that mm -hmm. are very hurtful you know for a lot of people but do you think that Hillary Clinton had the support of the union labor or the labor force I mean the people that you says well, her well, husband the, passed I, NAFTA yeah I think okay. she does have support from them but only because they think she's the one that's going to win well hold on you says her husband <laughs> signed NAFTA and so what's she, wrong with NAFTA? she's well for NAFTA, I know here in Flint, you know, my dad worked for Buick for 30-some mm -hmm. years, and with, you know, large trade deals like that, it, we tend to export routinized industry manufacturing for cheaper labor overseas. Mm -hmm. That kills American domestic industry. I mean, it really does. Mm -hmm. It put Flint, Michigan, I mean, we were on the map before. We were Vehicle mm -hmm. City, USA, mm -hmm. and not anymore. You know, I grew up during that whole entire time period, you know, from the early 90s, and then I saw the fall. You know, mm -hmm. I, I saw everybody move out, and, you know, Buick City and Chevy in the hole just, just re reduced to rubble, and then, mm -hmm. you know, GM foreclosed on it, gave it to the state. State don't want it. State can't do anything with it. I mean, it's it's a violation of business th business ethics, and even though President Clinton ran on that, that labor union, strong, mm -hmm. strong labor union platform, he passed mm -hmm. NAFTA. From what Hillary said about TPP, I'm not confident that, you know, she is going to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the new, new NAFTA is what I call it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not confident that, that she is, she's going to vote against it. She said that she didn't like it from what she saw. But, but, but that was actually. But she even was knowing, Georgia, yeah. knowing what he just says, you still going to vote for her? Only if she Hillary? gets the nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, but knowing that she can kill more jobs like that? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't um, think anyone in the GOP is going to do anything better. Uh, anything better than that. Uh, it would yeah. probably be worse. Because GOP, GOP candidates typically always support large scale in, mm -hmm. in the name of, of, of commercial success, in the, in the name of economic development. But uh, sometimes you want that, well, it's a good point, well, but you mm -hmm. want also the, the business do well, so provide more jobs as well. Not here, though. Yeah, they're not going to. <laughs> they're going to export them. Hey, they're, they're constantly in search of cheaper labor, which is going to be overseas because they don't have any collective bargaining, yeah. they don't have any labor unions, mm -hmm. and they don't have the state regulations that require things like minimum, you know, min minimum wages or mandatory minimum age for working. You know, these, yeah. they, these are the way that they're able to get around and exploit labor so that mm -hmm. they can increase profits. Mm -hmm. And then that same profit is what mm -hmm. we are discussing that is held overseas and yeah. then is in, in escapes American taxes. And, what and that's you, a problem. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so now, because uh, you know, we have a time, sure, sure. Of, I want to ask this other question. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, the, you know, we, ha we have in the point that it looks like President Obama have to make a decision to, to appoint a new sup Supreme Court member. You yeah. think have to be in this term, in his term, or wait mm -hmm. until the new president come? Well, the Constitution says that the president has the power to do it, and Congress, you mm -hmm. know, overlooks it. Uh, well, the, uh, the the Senate overlooks it. Mm -hmm. So I think Obama should be able to nominate, and yes. the Senate needs to, you know, just accept that. No, the Senate can confirm, right? Yeah. Not just overlooked, actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. they're the ones that uh, 
make right, their appointment right. actually happen. Okay. Uh, so I, I think they just need to, you know, accept that and do it, mm -hmm. or else the argument can be extended to uh, they can't pass any legislation because mm -hmm. let's let the American people decide what legislation should be passed after the next election. Mm -hmm. So n none of the Republicans in the Senate should be allowed to pass. So any essentially, legislation. shortening his term, yeah. you know, and that, and I think it's kind of unfair to a democratic, democratically elected, you know, official if you don't allow him to do anything, even mm -hmm. though it says so in the Constitution, you don't mm -hmm. allow him to do his job, to, you know, what, obviously it's, it's going to be his proposals, it's his plan, he was democratically elected. You know, even if you disagree with his policies or, or who he is as a person or a leader, you know, you still ha he was democratically elected to the position, he needs to fulfill that yeah. till the end. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and if and you cut it short, I'm sorry. And but, <laughs> their argument is to allow the American people to decide who should fill the Supreme mm -hmm. Court, but they already decided that back in 2012 when they first elected him. Even though so, I saw a video of Vice President Joe Biden when he was a U.S. Senator saying mm -hmm. that uh, a case similar like this back yeah, in the 80s, saying yeah, the other way around that he said. Yeah, the, Bush Senior. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when that happened, he was just out, you know, speaking out against it, which is pretty hypocritical. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they still confirmed who he picked. So mm -hmm. it's not a, you know, an obstructionist mm -hmm. thing. It was just Joe Biden, you know, leading an effort. Oh, yeah, to even though it's not it. even though it's, it's not, just not, not my okay. candidate, I, I still support right. I, I support the process, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he, you know, you salute the man not the or you salute the rank, not the man kind of thing, you know. So you guys know any other candidates that President Obama is looking for? I mean is you guys any well, S Sandoval, you know, turned down. He was a, a pretty moderate mm -hmm. Republican, and mm -hmm. I know he was looking at him. Uh, he's the governor of Nevada, I believe. Yeah, in Nevada, and uh, and he's a pretty moderate. He supports social programs, like a, what I would what I would term a, a compassionate conservative. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I was in support of him, but he already turned it down. So I don't I don't know who else. It was a rumor back in mm -hmm. in 2008 when uh, Hillary Clinton was running against Barack Obama. Mm -hmm that Hillary may have, if she, she won in 2008, but mm -hmm. she didn't won in 2008, that she will appoint uh, former Michigan governor uh, uh, Gralhom, Jennifer Gralhom. Do you think, and I see Gralhom or, or Robert mm -hmm. in the media, sure. in interviews and all mm -hmm. that, do you think Gralhom will be an uh, alternative from? No, yeah. I'm not sure. You know, that's, I, you know, I, she no, hasn't really been, hear? yeah, I haven't really seen much of anything. I don't know yeah. where she stands on a lot of issues like that. And, mm -hmm. and it is different, you know, going from the state to federal level, there's, there's, there's different players involved in, yeah. in bigger, bigger things. But I, I think someone that has a background in judicial work should be, mm -hmm. you know, first considered mm -hmm. over someone from the executive branch. Jordan, yeah. do you think Jennifer Graham did a good job in the state of Michigan as a governor? I, I think she did a far better job than Rick Snyder. <laughs> okay. uh, no, but, I, I was asking you. But, uh, you know, the, given the like the, what was happening mm -hmm. uh, under um, the Bush administration. I, I think she handled the situation fairly mm -hmm. well, okay. but it, it wasn't the best governorship. Okay. Guys, I would love to continue the interview, but the time sure. is up. But I'm very happy to have both of you. It was a great you interview. Thank for I know a lot of people said that this is going to become a Jerry Springer team, but no, it didn't. <laughs> Negative. So it was really good. Yeah. We're all, we're all patriots here, all yes. Americans. So. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for both of you, Cam. And maybe I, I would like to see you maybe later around and some other interviews. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, them. I mean, a month from now, we can see who is really winning in the Democrat primary. Yeah. And I would like to have both of you and give me your opinion about what do you think about Next Friday. Well, thank Definitely. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the drive here. Mm -hmm be here. That's all for today. Um, if you want to contact uh, Jordan or Mac, you have his contact right in his Facebook. They're the University of Michigan Flint Democrats College. If you are inter interested to follow up and um, follow them, they have a Facebook page. It's right there in the screen. And uh, if you want to be on my show, you can call us at uh, 248-736-7163. And also, we have a Facebook page, and you can like us at the Jose Alega Show on Facebook. And thank you, because we have so many likes lately, and that uh, I'm glad that you like and enjoy the show. Thank you so much, and God bless you. <laughs>